Uh, good evening. Uh, I was at home this afternoon um, uh, and I started feeling what we all feel when the Lord wants us to say something. Um, and uh, it, it, it took its form as I was thinking. And I was going to talk straight from the heart because it's something very natural because we, all of us here believe what we believe and we're here for the same reason. But nevertheless, then I found some scriptures, or the Lord showed me some scriptures, which I just thought I'd pass through, which you all know, you know, nothing major, but important, because we're living in, in difficult times, but we are living in these times. There's not anybody else that's living, but we are living, and so are millions of other Christians, whom the Lord has revealed His return, revealed His people, concerning His people, for this time, we have been born now with a purpose and for a purpose. And it is for a very important purpose. Preparation for His return. Amen. Nothing less. So when we talk about Israel, we're talking about Yeshua. When we talk about Israel, we talk about loving the Jewish people, we see the face of Yeshua in the Jewish people. He came as a Jew in the line of David. And it is not just something that we have picked up, picked up on, on because we decided, oh, that's something indifferent, we're going to attach ourselves to this or that. It is something we have to feel in our hearts and in our spirits Amen. that it is of the Lord. That is what makes us persevere and that is what we have to do, we have to persevere. Yeah. But we're also walking a very, very thin line. Nobody understands us, only the Lord understands us. The Jew doesn't understand us sometimes. The Christians don't understand us, even though we're Christians too. So we're walking in this mind the gap, and we're in the gap, actually, of everything that's going on in our lives as we live this life as Christians. No? But there are millions of us, like I said before, it's not just us. This is something that, that the Holy Spirit is doing, God is doing, oh, Spirit, yes. for such a time as this. So I, want, I just want you to take, what I already know you have in your hearts, but to take it, to realize the importance of being steadfast in this. Let us forget what people think, let us forget how we're looked at by even our friends, the Jewish people, or even our friends, the Christians, other Christians. Let us focus on what the Lord has shown us and remain steadfast in Him. And I'd just like to say a few things, like, like for example in Esther, no? In Esther we have... Esther 4, 13 to 17, I have the, uh, the Bible uh, Tree of Life version, so it's a bit different to the, one, the New King James. But 4, 13 to 17 says, Mordecai, talking about Mordecai, told them to reply to Esther with this answer. Do not think that in your soul that you will escape in the king's household more than all the Jews, because she was Jewish and they were planning to kill all the Jews. So the uncle told her this. For if you remain silent and don't stand with Israel, don't stand with the Jewish people, at this time relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Who knows whether you have attained royal status for such a time as this? Yes, Lord. Or have been born for such a time as this. But here it says royal status. Of course, she was a queen. But aren't we a royal priesthood? Amen. Amen. Yes. Haven't we achieved, yeah, sure. received a royal status, even though we don't deserve it? Mm -hmm. So it applies to us as well, not only to her as a queen in those days. That was one of them. Then the other one is in Ruth, of course. Ruth 1, 16 to 17. Ruth's covenant with Naomi mother-in-law. And Ruth replied, do not plead with me to abandon you, to turn back from following you. Where, for where you go, I will go. Yes, Lord. And where you stay, I will stay. And your people will be my people. Hallelujah. And your God will be my God. Yes, Lord. And where you die, I will die. Mm. And there I will be buried. May Adonai deal with me and worse, if anything but death comes between me and you. Amen. I know it's a strong statement, oh, wow. but this is how it is. 
when God is showing us and millions of other Christians, what for, for another reason may, he may not be showing to others, it is a very important thing, it's a very deep thing. We, we think it is, well, okay, yes, part of our lives, you know, we love the Jews. No, this is very, very important to him. So we have to allow ourselves to be open so he can use us in whatever way. We are provoking Israel to jealousy yes. simply by loving them unconditionally. Amen. A friend loves at all times, no? Say it's yeah. precious. And we will always love them unconditionally. And it doesn't matter really. I've had friends who've said, no, you don't love me. You only love me because you're waiting for the Messiah to come to Israel. But you don't love me. When are you going to love me without thinking about that? And I say, but, but my, my God is your God. My God has shown me that I have to love you. I have to love my neighbor and myself anyway, but he's shown me how important you are now. Mm. That you, your, your nation is back, you're back in your land. The prophets of Ezekiel, the dry bones, are coming together. He's putting flesh in you, he's going to put your spirit in you one day. So, you know, that is why, I, when, that is why when we have this revelation of Israel, we have a revelation of Yeshua, really. We have a revelation of Jesus, who Yeshua really is, yeah. how deep it is to know God. Mm. I know I go through scriptures and... Don't worry. Oh, in Romans 11, Romans 11, 25 to 32, it says... I say then, they did not stumble so as to fall, did they? May it never be, but by their false step, salvation has come to the Gentiles, to provoke Israel to jealousy. <laughs> we don't know how God is doing this, because we know that we get rejected because of what's happened to them in the name of our Lord in the past. But still, it says here that the, the reason it's happened is to provoke Israel to jealousy. So in the spirit world, something has been happening since then, that is provoking many of them to jealousy throughout their lives and is preparing them for the Lord's return to his holy mountain. Zion. I am speaking to you who are Gentiles in so far as I'm an emissary to the Gentiles. If somehow I might provoke to jealousy my own flesh and blood and save some of them. For, their, for if their rejection leads to the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life of the dead? Amen. And this is what the Lord is putting in our hearts all the time. All these years we want to love them we really love them we don't just love them because it's good to be pro-israel or because the world hates them we love them because god has given us a love for them mm. so it's not even a human love it's a it's a god god love it's god. a godly love you know uh, and it's sometimes it's difficult to deal with it as a human but we know we love them i know i love them i don't care who they are i don't care what they say about us i don't care what they think I know we love them because our God is telling us to love them. That is why nothing can shake us and nothing should shake us Amen. Yes. or make us feel ashamed of loving them. We are obeying Yeshua. We are obeying the Holy One. Mm. You know, we disobey Him in so many other ways. I always say to Him, Lord, please don't ever let me disobey you in this. I promise you. That's what I say to Him. Lord, please, may I always remain faithful to your people and love them with your love. Keep me, keep me with your love for your people Israel, who are, who are my people too, because we have been grafted in. And in 1 to 8, in 11, 1 to 8, Romans says, I said then God has rejected his people, has he? No, may it never be, for I too am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he from you beforehand. Or do you not know what the scripture says about Elijah? Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel. Adonai, they have killed your prophets. They have destroyed your altars. I alone am left and they are seeking my life. I say then, God has not rejected his people, has he? May it never be, for I too am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew beforehand. Or do you not know what the scripture says about Elijah? How he pleads with God against Israel. Yeah. With reason in those days. He says, Adonai, they have killed your prophets. They have destroyed your altars. I alone am left. He knew he was on his own. 
and they are seeking my life. But what is the divine response to him? This goes out to all those who believe in replacement theology. <laughs> I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to bow. So in the same way also, at this present time, there has come to be a remnant according to God's gracious choice. Yes. And if anybody gets angry that God has, has cho chosen the Jews, he better beware. Do not go, do not go against what God has chosen. The mighty one. I'd rather be with God and stand with him in that. The holy one of Israel. Oh yes, Lord. So in the same way also at this present time there has come to be a remnant according to God's gracious choice. But if it is by grace, it is no longer by works. Otherwise grace would no longer be grace. What then? What Israel is seeking it has not obtained, but the elect obtained it and the rest were hardened. Just as it is written. It is written. That's a, that was another one. And I just want to leave you with little bits of understanding which you already know but I mean to revive that understanding and to, and to make you in your spirit so strong and so bold and so sure of what you are standing with and for. You're not standing with man, you're not standing with an idea, you're not standing with oh this is it's a popular thing going on, you're standing with what God is telling you Amen. now. Yes. That's why we have been born and we are alive now, still alive now. Mm. That's, that's what it is. That's what, those, that's what the house of Judah is supposed to be for. That's what this is supposed to be for. That's what Prince of Peace is supposed to be for. That's what many, many hundreds of thousands of other churches and groups all over the world are for. God has touched them and they are responding. Each in their own time as God knows when they're going to respond. But they are responding. And um, in Ezekiel 29, 25 to 29. No, it's 39 actually. See, he says, I will put my glory among the nations. All the nations will see my, ju my judgment that I will execute and my hand that I will lay on them. That the house of Israel will know that I am Adonai, I am their God from that day onwards. The nations will know, replacement with theologists, the nations will know that the house of Israel went to their exile for their iniquity because they broke faith with me. So I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. And all of them fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanliness and their transgressions and I hid my face from them. Therefore that says Adonai Elohim. Now I will restore Jacob from exile. Not the Christians. The twelve tribes I will restore Jacob from exile when I have compassion on the whole house Hallelujah. on the whole house, on the twelve tribes Amen. I will be zealous for my holy name Ooh. they will bear their shame and all the disloyalty by which they broke faith with me when they were living securely in their land but no one making the faith when I brought them back from the peoples and I gathered them out of their enemies lands I will be sanctified in them in the eyes of many nations Oh, so Israel doesn't exist anymore? Well, the Bible says it does. Amen. Ah. Yes, Lord. The Bible says it does. Then they will know that I am Adonai their God. Since it was I who caused them to go into exile among the nations. And I who will gather them back to their own land. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I will never again leave them there. I will never again hide my faith. Never again. I will never again hide my face from them. Wow, the word of the Lord. For I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel. Yes, Lord. This is a declaration of Adonai. So be. So, to all replacement theologies, to all who think that Israel is not relevant to Christianity, beware. Change your ways, change your minds. Repent. Seek the Lord. Repent. Repent and seek the Lord. Because you do not want to be in the wrong camp when times, when the times that are coming. You want to be in the Lord's camp. Yes, yes, we're sinners. Yes, we're all the same. Yes, He loves us all. But there's going to be a big chasm between one side and the other. You either love His people 
and you and and you therefore love him or you don't love him, even though you say you don't, if you don't love his people. Mm -hmm. um, just two very short ones now. One in Zechariah thirteen six. Oh, we'll find it because this Bible doesn't have the the scriptures in the order we have it. Uh, so, if I lose it, which I have, I have to find either the Zechariah, Zechariah 6, no, Zechariah 13, sorry. It says, in that day, in that day, a spring will be opened to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. This is when they, because people ask, well, you know, we have to preach them. Of course we have to preach them. We have to preach the good news, yes. But there's a time for the nation to come to, to him. Yes. Only one time, not our time. It's his time. And he's told us in his word. Amen. So we shouldn't be resisting what he says. Amen. And he's saying, <laughs> will be opened, the spring will be opened to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin, to cleanse them from sin and impurity. It will happen in that day. Amen. Yes, it sure. is a declaration of Adonai that I will erase, this is Senor, the names of the idols from the land and they will no longer be remembered. Furthermore, I will remove the prophets and the unclean spirit from the land. If anyone still prophesies, his father and his mother to whom he was born will say to him, you cannot live because you tell lies. You have to be careful, you know. Many prophets out there nowadays talking about Jesus, asking for money. Bringing healing. I'm sure the healing does happen because the name of Jesus is the most powerful name in the world. Amen. Yes. But let's not focus on men, but on God. Therefore, in that day, each prophet will be ashamed of his vision when he prophesies. And then he says, Behold, the day, the day of Adonai is coming, when your plunder will be divided in your midst. They're being attacked, they're being destroyed. In fact, there's more to read, but there's only a third of them left after this massive war. And they're in Jerusalem, and they're asking for the Lord. And the Lord said to them, you will not see me again until you say, Baruch Haba Hashem. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And even though they don't know Yeshua is, is the Baruch Haba Hashem Adonai, but they're in fear, and they're calling on the Lord, right? The city shall be captured, the houses ransacked, and the women ravaged. Half of the city will be exiled, but the remainder of the people will not be cut off from the city. And then Adonai will go forth and fight those nations as he fights in the day of battle. In that day, as before I said, in that day, the same day when he pours his spirit, in that day, <laughs> his feet, his feet, Yeshua's feet, will stand on the Mount of Olives. Hallelujah. Which lies to the yes. east of Jerusalem. It's there, it's there now. It will be there forever. And the Mount of Olives will split in two from east to west, forming a huge valley, etc., etc. Mm. In that day, there will be no light, cold, or frost. It will be a day no, no, no link to Adonai. And I, that re this always reminds me of um, the late Lance Lambert. <laughs> and, and when Satan has done everything possible Amen. to destroy God's people, and failed. <laughs> um, and actually, he was hanging as he said it. And then he looked at everybody, and everybody was waiting. <laughs> and then he said, Then, he said very quietly, Then God will have his day. And Hallelujah. Said, Ready, boys, you know? <laughs> You've tried everything you can. You are, are we in the right camp? That's, uh, that's what, we have, what we have to know. Are we in his camp? With all our failings, we ask forgiveness. But are we in his camp? Or are we in the camp who thinks that we know it all, we don't need anything anymore, and we don't even want to listen to what he says in his anymore? <laughs> this is the, you know, this is the, the reality. Very good. So, uh, uh, so, I mean, I'm finishing now, obviously. Um, so this is what I'm trying to say, that this is what Yeshua wants, not what we want. You know, uh, don't ever, ever allow 
the enemy to say to you or put doubt into you. Oh, this is just something that's going on now, you know, it's like so many other things that are going on in Christianity nowadays. No, no, God is, is moving. The Spirit is moving. The Ruach Adosh is moving throughout the world. He's touching spirits and hearts, minds. You know, he says, be ready in season and out of season. Most of us sometimes are out of season. But still, we still have to be ready because he still uses us. And, and you know, who knows if, if the Jewish people... Sometimes when we meet them, because I've noticed sometimes, I don't want to say anything, but... And they look at you and they say, hello, and you can see, you know, that they wonder. They, you can see that they feel that our love is not the love of the world that turns on them every, every so often. That our love is different. Genuine. But they can't understand it. And even we can't understand it, why we love them and that sometimes. Mm -hmm. But we do, because it's the Holy Spirit, no? Mm -hmm. It's the same Spirit that's going to fall on that day. Because I missed a little bit, I missed a little bit, which is very important. Because on that day, someone, it says here, someone in, in, the first, in chapter 13 says, In that day, someone will ask him, when they see him coming, on the Mount of Olives, they've been asking, Baruch Haba, what's your other night? He says, oh, I'm coming, you, you called me. So he's coming in glory, he's coming to the Mount of Olives, and someone who's looking, or the many hundreds or thousands were there, because the enemy is behind them, someone will say, and will ask him, what are, what are these wounds between your hands? Oh. What are these wounds? He doesn't understand. The Messiah has appeared, and he has wounds in his hands. What are these wounds? Wow. And he will answer. And he will say, these are the wounds with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Oh, oh my God. Okay, morning, Have morning. Mercy. What a beautiful Rachel, day. Rachel, oh, what a beautiful day. Rachel. And then they realize who Yeshua is. Amen. And then they mourn for him as one monster and only son. Amen. Hallelujah. No? And this is why we're here. This is why we were born in the 50s and in the 60s and the 70s. Because he wanted us to be here and to 40. be part of what he's doing. Yeah, he's <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted us to be part of what he's doing. Part of what he's doing Amen. without always understanding why or what we're doing here. But nevertheless, we're here. Okay. And we're not here, even at home, he's using us. So that's, that's what I wanted, just wanted to encourage you. And that we are on a very thin. Nobody, not a lot of people will ever understand. But we know he does because he's the one who's making us walk that walk. Amen. So that's that should be enough for us. Everything else? No, don't hate, love, love everybody, bless them, pray for them. We just carry on as, as, as much as we can. Amen. Okay, Father, thank you, Lord Yeshua, for your presence here. I'm deserving though we are, Lord, but you are here, Lord. Yes. Because you have made us come here. Because yes. you have made us love your people. Thank you, Father. And we are ha happy that you made us love them. We love them yes. with all our hearts. Yes, Lord. We, th we love them with your heart, Father. Mm. And we just want you, Lord, to bless your people, Lord. Yes, to bless Lord. Israel. Amen. To bless the Jewish co community here. Yes, Father. To bless Jews everywhere. To yes. protect them from the enemy, wherever they are. To send your angels Lord, to be Lord. with them. And to show who you are, Lord, in all mm. the nations, as you say in your uh, word. Man, yes, all yes. the nations will know who I am. Yes, Lord. All the nations will know that the God of Israel is the one true God. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. you, Father. Amen. Amen. Amen.